The Mega Drive just had its 30th birthday. How did Japan celebrate? To find out, stay here. This is GTV, a channel that does what the others don't. Sega! On October 29th, 2018, the Sega Mega Drive officially turned 30 years old in its native country of Japan. In celebration, a few publishers have released special memorial books to commemorate the milestone. Two in particular have grabbed the most attention. One is called the Mega Drive Perfect Catalog, and the other is called the Mega Drive Complete Guide. In this video, we're going to take a look at both of them. First up, the Perfect Catalog. This book begins with a look at the publicity the Mega Drive received in 1988 and 1989. It talks about its struggles against the PC Engine and Nintendo as well. Quick blurbs about magazines dedicated to the Mega Drive are also here. Then the book gets right to it, with full specs of the Mega Drive hardware and photo layouts. The next few pages get even more technical, with explanations of all the processors in the Mega Drive. After that, there are depictions of each visual mode the Mega Drive was capable of, and the book gives diagrams and examples that are easy to understand. The Yamaha sound processor is explained as well. There's also a story about how important Sega felt that the Mega Drive needed a headphone jack so users could fully experience the sounds of games as intended. Then the controller and all of its ports are given a look, including a special port only on the Model 1 Japanese Mega Drive that looks a lot like a standard controller port, but actually isn't. The next few pages are devoted to the actual game cartridges, packaging, and cartridge variants, like the Virtua Racing SVP cartridge and the Sonic & Knuckles lock-on cartridge. After that, there are listings of each hardware add-on and peripheral, as well as overseas versions. I'll come back to that soon, but the rest of the book is devoted to what's most important, the software library of the Mega Drive. Starting out, there's a list of icons that were used on the packaging of the original Mega Drive games, all put together in one place to help you out. This way you can quickly know if a game in the book is for one player or more, if it's action, sports, RPG, or anything else, as well as if the game is a cartridge or disc. Each game in the book gets mostly equal spacing. The title is shown on top, along with the original release date, publisher, original price, and cartridge size, along with one paragraph describing the game. Starting with Super Thunder Blade, released on October 29th, 1988, the book goes year by year on each and every official Japanese Mega Drive game. Believe it or not, only four games were released in 1988 and 21 in 1989. But starting in 1990, things pick up, and they go all the way to the final game, Madol Monogatari 1, released on March 22, 1996. How many games were there released in Japan? This book states that there were 578 games for sale, across the Mega Drive and all of its add-ons. The book also has commentary about the impact of the Mega Drive and Genesis abroad, with a list of games and hardware released in America, Europe, and Brazil. Next up is the Complete Guide. This book is physically smaller than the Perfect Catalog, but the format is the same. But due to the size of the book, there's much less text, and what space there is, is mostly given to photos of games and hardware. The main difference, though, is that this book divides games not only by year, but by format. So all of the Mega Drive cartridge games come first, and then Mega CD games, and so on. Now you might think this book is the lesser of the two, as it seems to have all of the same information, just shrunk down. But there's actually more fit into the complete guide than the perfect catalog, because the complete guide also features each Mark III game, as well as each SG-1000 game. On top of that, there are tons of scans from Sega magazines and advertisements. Alright, let's get to the good stuff, the hardware variations. In both books, there's a lot of detail given to each model of the Mega Drive, as well as each add-on and peripheral. 
The perfect catalog has more detail, but the complete guide has better and rarer stuff. So let's take a look. Of course first is the Model 1 Mega Drive, known in America as the Genesis. Then the Mega Adapter, which lets you play Mark III and Master System games on the Mega Drive. Controllers are also shown, and I like how they include the front of the box for so many of these accessories. Did you know the Mega Drive had an analog controller? It was called the XE1AP. This is the Mega Modem, a little box connected to the back of the Mega Drive and then connected into a phone line to let your Mega Drive be connected to the internet. Along with the Mega Modem, Sega sold a service called the Sega Game Library, where you could download and play games from the service for 800 yen a month. The most well-known game from the service has come to be Fantasy Star 2 Text Adventure. With the Mega Modem, you could also use another service called the Mega Answer. This allowed you to do online banking transactions. And, well, that's it. If you wanted the whole set, which included the Mega Answer software and printer, it cost 72,800 yen, that's about 430 US dollars, in 1990. The Model 1 Mega CD, known in some markets as the Sega CD. The one with the cool, loading disc door and lights on the front. It's probably better to show off the Mega CD in video form, but the book does show some cool catalogs and advertising from the time. One add-on that works with the Mega CD was the Mega Karaoke, or Karaoke if you're American. The Mega CD paved the way for the Wonder Mega, which was a combination of the Mega Drive and Mega CD in one unit. Kind of like a PC Engine Duo or Twin Famicom. There was actually a Sega version and a Victor version. These had the karaoke player function built in, somewhat justifying the higher price tag. There was also the Wonder Mega M2, which was a little smaller and had a wireless controller. Of course, every Sega diehard knows that in 1993, the Mega Drive and Mega CD were slimmed down and re-released in lower cost versions. In Japan, the hardware redesign coincided with a packaging redesign, which matches the theme of the Sonic the Hedgehog 2 box. Somewhat. And more peripherals were released, including the Sega Mouse and the six-button controller. Let's not forget the 32X, known in Japan as the Super 32X. The design is basically the same as everywhere else, but something that caught my eye was that in Japan, the Super 32X was released on the same day as the Sony PlayStation, December 3rd, 1994. That was also about two weeks after the Sega Saturn hit the stores in Japan. Okay, now let's get into the Super Rares. This is the Terra Drive, a Mega Drive and IBM 286 PC hybrid. You couldn't design games on it, though it looks like you could. It's basically just a PC that also plays Mega Drive games. The Mega Jet, which was a handheld Mega Drive that connected to external monitors for use on airline flights within Japan. Even though that was the original plan for the Mega Jet, it was later sold separately for consumers to take it anywhere. The Pioneer Laser Active. This was a strange hybrid machine that was a laser disc player that could also play Mega Drive and PC Engine games, karaoke too, and probably a bunch of other stuff no one knows about. The base unit cost just under 90,000 yen, and if you wanted to play games by Sega or NEC, you had to buy separate packs to unlock that ability. Of course, they cost more than a standalone unit would, but to top it all off, there were a few Mega LD games which were only playable on the Laser Active with a Mega Drive pack. There were also LD ROM ROM games too, but I've never seen any in person. This is the CDS GM1 by Iwa. It was a Mega Drive, Mega CD, karaoke machine, and a cassette player, all in one. Released in September 1994, it cost 45,000 yen. All of these machines are covered in both books, but the complete guide goes one step further, since it also took the time to cover Sega's history prior to the Mega Drive. So this book gives us a look at some Mark III hardware variations and peripherals. 
none of which I can assure you are easy to find or affordable in any way. There are also a few SG-1000 related items, like the Othello Multivision. Included in this is probably the holiest of holy grails for a Sega collector, the Seed SD-21 and SD-G5. These were made by Pioneer, you know, the laser active people. The SD-21 is a monitor and the main component of the Seed Entertainment System. You can attach different modules to the Seed to expand the system to your liking. The SD-G5 is one kind of pack that allows you to play SG-1000 games on the Seed system. The Seed system also had other packs for other forms of entertainment, including, you guessed it, Frank Stallone. この番組はご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りします。ディオン it's Mega World. サンドのエイズのシンジゲーム、電化無敵スペクタル。ハイパータッチメン、メガシティ。セガ。2つの頭脳が同時に動く。2つの頭脳が同時に動く。2つのCPUが同時に動く。未来性の加速。テラドライブ